name is Pat Fitzsimmons and I am the West Coast Regional Applications Representative. Hey everybody, Tracking Pat here. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the Prototrack RLX. And although what I'm about to show you does apply to the RMX as well, I think it's less likely that people know how to do tapping in the lathe. And so we're gonna talk about that a little bit. First of all, I'm gonna go to the program mode and in here, where it's asking me to give it a name, right? I'm just gonna open my keyboard and I'm going to get rid of that zero and just put in here, tap. Okay, hit my absolute button, close the keyboard, swipe forward. So the event itself is very simple, right? Down in here where you'll see it says tap in the lower right hand corner. It doesn't ask a lot of questions. So Z rapid is how close to the part you initially wanna get. It's generally gotta be the front of the part, right? So let's say I wanna get within a hundred thousandths of the part and then I want to go whatever the depth of my thread is, let's say minus one inch, okay? The hardest question it asks is the pitch of the thread, right? And the pitch of the thread is one inch divided by the threads per inch. So for instance, if I wanted to do a quarter 20 tap, that thread would be one divided by 20, which is 0 0.05. Now, if I didn't know that, I would come in here and I would open my calculator and I'd say one divided by 20 equals, and then I would just hit the abset key and it will put it in there for me, okay? So there's a couple different ways to do that. That one's easy to do in my head. That's why I like to use it. The RPM is simply how fast the spindle is going to be running. I'm going to put it at 300, and then the tool number I'm going to use is just tool number one. And what I would do is open my tool table and I would just set this tap up, right? So I'd look for my tap here, right there. I would tell it what it's made out of. I would tell it the diameter. In this case, it's a quarter inch and then I would touch off my tools. You'll see that the way it touches off the tool is to take the side of the tap and touch it off the material, and you're gonna tell it what size that material is, and you're gonna tell it where the end of the material is and the diameter of the tap, and it's gonna take half the material and half the tool, put them together and put the tap on center, and that's how it knows how to make it, okay? If I close that and I go to setup mode, in here you're not gonna see much of anything, because it's one straight line down the center of the part. From the tool path, you can tell that it looks very simple. But what's most important is to understand how it actually works. So in the Prototrack products, there's not an encoder that's actually reading every step of the spindle, okay? There is an encoder that's reading how fast it's running so it knows how fast to drive the tap in and to bring it back out. So in the tapping event, it's gonna come in, it's gonna reverse the direction in Z, and it's also gonna reverse the direction of the way the spindle is turning. But it's not maybe gonna do it at an exact time the way a lot of high-end machines do with rigid tapping. So because of that, we definitely would uh, request or require that you have something like a tapping head. So this tapping head that I'm holding up here right now is made by Ericsson. There's a lot of companies that make them and it's called a compression extension tap holder. The reason they call that is, as you can tell, it extends or it compresses. So the way that it works is it has check balls in there. And so as I start to go into the material, if it doesn't start to cut right away, it'll compress until it has enough energy to push it in and start cutting those threads. If it gets to the point where everything re reverses and it doesn't do it simultaneously, what'll happen is it'll expand. Let's say it's starting to go out in the z-axis but it's still moving a little bit forward in the spindle, it'll expand so that the tap doesn't break, and then it'll come out of the hole, and once it gets out of the hole, it'll snap back to the neutral position. So this will save your tap if something is a little bit out of sync from the in and out directions. So you will need this in order to be tapping, but once you do that, you can tap all day long, you'll never have a problem and you won't break your taps. Same thing is true on our milling machines, but in this case, we're just talking about the lathe. I hope this simplifies it for you. And you can use this the next time you're doing stuff instead of completing a part and bringing your tail stock in and tapping by hand or taking the part out and really using a hand tap. It's much faster, it's much more productive to do the tapping in the CNC. I hope this helps you. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, keep on tracking.